Hello, hello. Greetings to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Um, I'm happy to be with you again at this hour of the day. I bless the good Lord who has made this opportunity available for us to listen and to learn again. Um, we keep growing in the Lord. We keep growing and maturing just as Christ Jesus grew and matured in stature and in wisdom. You know, um, in the secondary school those days, and when we were taught biology as a subject, coming to the char characteristics of living things, the first characteristic of a living thing is growth. Growth. Every living thing grows. When a living thing does not grow, it means there is a problem somewhere. So one of the things we do is to grow. Do you grow? How much growth have you experienced? The year is almost running out. Have you grown? What we are your targets at the beginning of the year? Have you achieved your targets? What's going on in your life? Anyways, um, that's a question for you to answer personally. So we are here today in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. May we say a word of prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Ancient of days, we love you. We come before you, humbling ourselves, as we ask you to purify us by the precious blood of your Son, Jesus. Cleanse us of every unrighteousness, even as we sit in your presence to hear your teaching, the teaching that comes from your Spirit, O Lord. May your name be glorified. Open our ears, open our hearts, that we may learn, that we may grow and give praise to your name. Father, impart in us knowledge to the revelation of Jesus Christ. Help us to achieve destiny, to fulfill destiny. Help us to influence the world, to impart the world positively. For your name is glorified in our lives. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, thank you, thank you, my dear friends. Um, today is a continuation, this message is a continuation of the message, of the two previous messages. Um, the first was titled, You Have a Great Destiny, you know, Destined for Greatness. That was the first um, video we made on this platform. And the second, the second video was how to discover your purpose or destiny, how to discover your purpose or destiny. I want to encourage you, if you have not watched any of those messages, please look for the links in the description, in the description box below, and uh, go and watch them. They are timely messages. Those messages are always fresh and new, very relevant. They're going to be useful to you and to people around you. So why not tell somebody to tell someone that we are here again today, um, as you are watching, even if you are watching after this video must have premiered, anytime you're watching, get someone to watch with you. And I want you to do something, click the like button. Whenever you click the like button, you make this video visible to more people. And if you have not subscribed, subscribe. If you have not subscribed, please do so. If you are happy with what you are hearing, if you are learning from this channel, subscribe and click the notification button so that whenever we premiere or we go live or we upload the message, um, you will be notified so that you wouldn't miss anything. Praise the Lord. So the topic of today is how to fulfill your destiny. Amen. How to fulfill your destiny. How to fulfill your destiny is a vast topic. It's so wide. Um, I've tried to uh, to summarize it under a number of points. Um, we may still may not be able to finish it today. Um, the last point, I might have to um, complete it another day because it is also 
a topic of his own. Praise the Lord. Yeah, so the last video showed us how to discover our destiny and how we can help our children. For those of you um, who have children, who have kids, um, young people growing up under you, how you can help them to discover their destiny in life. This is so important, precious people. Um, so many people do not discover destiny because those who should, those who brought them up didn't even know they had a great destiny, not to talk of discovering it. Praise the Lord. Um, that's just what it is. But now that this message is coming to you, you have no excuse. You got to help your children, your unborn children. They must fulfill their destiny. It is a burning desire in my heart. So why not grab your pen and grab a paper and uh, get ready to jot down some points. It's so important. Do not just watch. You know, um, the human brain has the capacity to forget. But when you write them down, when you write them down, you can fall back on them 10 years to come, next five years, next two years. It might be a time when you needed it most and something you jotted down will become so relevant and might even be the stepping stone you need to step into your destiny. Praise the Lord. And ask the good Lord to help you to fulfill your divinely appointed destiny in life in the name of Jesus. Pray. Tell Lord, help me to fulfill my destiny. Make the grace available. Lead me to knowledge. Shako Besetek Felemen. You that is listening to this message, I ask that the Lord will empower you that you fulfill destiny. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. How can you fulfill your destiny? What do you have to do? There are laws of nature and there are spiritual laws. Knowledge of these laws are actually an advantage. What you know will work for you. What you know and put it into practice, it will benefit you. But what you do not know, how can you put it, put it in practice? That's not going to happen. So, jot down these points that I'm going to teach you. You will be in the position to teach someone else. Praise the Lord. As I said before, if you have not watched the two previous messages, please go back and watch them. They are great messages the Lord is bringing before you. So how to fulfill your great destiny? There must be things you need to do. No one can fold his or her hands and watch his great destiny being fulfilled. No. If you fold your hands, nothing is going to happen. Practically and absolutely nothing. And you might end up living your life and someone who never had a destiny. Although I, I don't believe no one had no destiny. No. God gifted every person. Before you were born, you were a finished product. You need no addition. You only grow into what you are. You only grow to discover what God has deposited in you. You only grow to discover your greatness you mature you can have you master your talents your destiny that's what actually happens when you think that something has been added you only discover amen it is a self-discovery and because jesus is our life our source our foundation the more you know the lord the more you come to know yourself Knowledge of God brings about knowledge of yourself. Praise the Lord. So number one thing you have to do in order to fulfill your destiny or in order to actualize your purpose in life, pinpoint one thing you are very good at doing. Pinpoint one thing that you are a master in. Praise the Lord. There must be one thing God has put in you 
that you can do better than every person around you. Yes, there is always that thing that when the need for it arises, people will say, go and call Justus. Go and call Sydney. Go and call that guy. He will put you through. Pinpoint that one thing. I know that people could be multi-talented. Okay, that's true. People could be multi-talented. There are people who know how to do a lot of things. If they touch this, they do it well. They touch this, they do it well. They touch other thing, they do it well. That is an, an advantage. Yet, there must be a major. Praise the Lord. There must be a major. What do you major in? What are you good at? How do you know that thing you are good at? When you wake up from sleep, even if someone, someone wakes you up and gives you that thing, you know how to handle it. Discover it. Strive to discover it. Praise the Lord. In destiny, there is no multitasking. There is no multitask destiny. In destiny, Within one destiny, there could be different dimensions, but you cannot say, I major here, I major in this, I major in this. It doesn't happen even in academics, in any fields. You don't major in different things at a, at a time. Praise the Lord. So pinpoint one thing you are very good at. Pinpoint, you must discover it. If you have not discovered it, start now. Discover it. Notice it. You may have been doing it already, but just that you don't pay attention. So just sit back, have a reflection, think, ask yourself, what is it? What is that one thing that I love doing? Amen. I don't want to spend more time on that point because we've already spoken about it um, in the previous lesson. Number two. Number two, give yourself devotedly and wholeheartedly to that one thing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Give yourself devotedly and wholeheartedly to that one thing you are good at. Praise the Lord. Give yourself devotedly. Commit yourself. Amen. Commit yourself. Remember when Jesus visited Mary and Martha in their house. You will find out in Luke chapter 10. Luke chapter 10. Jesus visited them. It was actually Martha who invited Jesus. The moment Jesus came into their house, Martha was running about looking for what to present to the Lord. He wants to cook. She wants to do this thing. She wants to do another thing in order to make the Lord comfortable. So she was actually running from pillar to post, doing the dishes and going to buy stuff. While her sister Mary went quietly to where Jesus was, sat down at the feet of Jesus and was listening listening to those gracious words and lovely words that were pouring out of the lips of the master, of the great teacher. She was learning. She was growing. Her faith was rising. Remember, faith comes by hearing, by hearing what? The word of God. So she sat at the feet of the master, learning, assimilating, absorbing, improving, why Martha, noticing what's going on, came and said to Jesus, My Lord, tell my sister to come and help me. She cannot leave me to do all the chores alone. You remember what Jesus told Martha? Jesus called her and said, Martha, Martha, you worry and fret about so many things, but only one is needed. Only one is needed. And Mary has chosen the most important part and no one can ever take it away from her. Isn't that beautiful? So what have you chosen? 
Praise the Lord. Choose the most important part. Stay on it. Stay. No hurry. Do not hurry over it. Stay. Stay with it. Assimilate it. Grow with it. Let it become part of you. Praise the Lord. I feel the presence of God. May the Holy Ghost impart this message in your life, in your heart, in the name of Jesus Christ. Stay, stay, and grow, and grow. No rush. Stay. Learn at the feet of the master. Learn by discovering. Learn by researches. Praise the Lord. Give yourself wholeheartedly to it. If you might, if you want to, if you want to grow, stay. Amen. And this takes us to the next point, which is number three: deploy every resource available. Amen. Deploy every resource available, which means pull to yourself every means, everything you can use to grow that can help you to grow. That is what it means to deploy every resource available. You know, if you have to invest, invest in buying books, buy books, buy books, buy things, attend workshops, attend seminars, grow, use your phone, your Google, Google your Google a, 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 a certain topic, learn, improve yourself, deploy every resource available. If you have to borrow, if you have to borrow a book, borrow a book. If you have to borrow um, a device, borrow a device. Everything. If you are someone that prays constantly, you pray always, deploy every means to pray, which means you can. You can put a worship music in the background to help you to pray. Yes, worship music playing in the background changes the atmosphere. Worship changes the atmosphere. And when you worship, you are also praying. It helps to fire you up. Anything, your MP3, use it. Anything, anything you can grab to support you, to encourage you, to help you to keep awake, to help you to learn to boost your morale, do it, bring it, you have to grow. That's number three. Deploy every resource available. Number four, number four is so important. Number four says, submit yourself and learn from people who are already successful in that area. Praise the Lord. Submit yourself and learn from people who are already successful in that area. If you want to fulfill destiny, humble yourself. Submit yourself to someone and learn. Melo down, as we say back there in Nigeria. Melo down, praise the Lord. Melo down and learn. There is nothing bad in going to someone's um, company or a shop and offering to help free of charge for three months. I want to serve you for three months so that I just want to keep myself busy. The person might say, I'm not paying. I have enough workers. If you want to join, it's up to you. There's nothing wrong with that. You know what you're looking for. Praise the Lord. Or you see a company that you like and they, you know you have interest in what they are doing there. You approach them, maybe the pay or the offer might be so small. What do you do? Do you run away? I say, no, no, it, it's too small. Stay there. What you're looking for is bigger than money. Praise the Lord. What you are looking for is bigger than that peanuts they're going to give you. In fact, if, if you have to pay in order to stay there and serve them, pay. Praise the Lord. No man is an island. There is nothing you are today or you can become that somebody has not become in the past. Somebody has walked that path. Many succeeded. Some may have made mistakes and failed. Yet, people are already doing what you desire to do. Praise the Lord. So, humble yourself and learn. Submit yourself and learn. Um, in our culture, um, in, in Nigeria, uh, you know, the Igbos will, the thing we call Omo boy, 
you know, apprentice system um, of education, I mean, informal education, where a, a young person will go to a successful businessman and they learn uh, to learn a trade or anything. Some could spare three years, four years, five years, as much as seven years. They are learning. They are growing. So when you find yourself in such, under such a situation, humble yourself. Humble yourself. Relax. Learn. Endure. You are growing and you are learning. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to um, advise young people who learn how to do things from others, especially those who want to survive. You know, do not cheat your master. Do not cheat your master. Because when we're Roman boy, they will just render their master, their boss, bankrupt. They steal from their boss. They send to their families. An apprentice building houses. And tomorrow you want God to bless you. You know, Jesus said, if you do not take care of what is not yours, who will give you what is yours? What is not yours that is under you? If you don't do it wholeheartedly, if you destroy it, who will give you what is yours? Isn't that funny? Who will give you what is yours? So when apprentices, when Umu boy goes on to destroy the Aoga, watch how such people end. They still end up struggling. Praise the Lord. So submit yourself and learn. Any area you find yourself, you can learn, you can grow. Praise the Lord. You can grow, you can grow. Every Anything that you can touch, you can improve. Anything that is touchable is improvable. Books, gadgets, clothes, images, shoes, photos. Just look around you. What can you see? That table. Even your phone, that device with which you are watching this message, you can improve it actually. That's why there are updates. Sometimes your phone has to update itself, even without your permission. It needs to improve. Not living things know that they should improve. And most humans do not even know. Many people do not even know that they, they need to improve. How much have you improved? From the beginning of this year till now, what have you improved on? That business you are doing, what knowledge have you added? Praise the Lord. Um, in the parish where I am right now, there's a beautiful garden. You know, well, many people listening to me may not understand what I mean by a garden. It's, it is not where they plant water leaf and the green and other vegetables, no. Um, garden is in this part of the world is actually um, your compound with what we call carpet grass in Nigeria and the flowers, you know. You mow it with your lawn mower and uh, you keep it neat. So um, I was speaking with one of the gardeners in the church and she says she used to learn online. She goes online to learn tips, to get tips on how to keep the garden. I was amazed. And that, and that was a lady of not less than 65 years. Learning on YouTube how to keep her garden. What about you? Maybe you are doing a business, even if it's fashion and design, any business, anything you can touch, you can improve on. Just everything is on, on the internet. Go to your Google, go to your YouTube. Type it. Type that topic. Type the newest trend. Updates. Update your knowledge. Knowledge never ends. Do not be outdated. If you do not update yourself, you will lose your customers. You are you surely going to lose your customers. Praise the Lord. I remember when I was a, a, a young boy growing up, there was this man that made my 
trousers, most of my trousers and the shirts, especially trousers then. He was a nice tailor. In fact, he is still a nice tailor. He does need to work. And uh, I, I loved him and I took most of my materials to him to make. Then as time went on, I discovered that actually he has become old fashioned. He will make the same trousers, the same style. It no longer appeals to me. At a point, I stopped going to him. He was still operating, okay? Still in his shop. But you notice that the younger, the young people no longer go to him. It's the elderly ones. Praise the Lord. <laughs> you know? So, because he did what he was doing well, but he never improved. So no matter how good you are at what you are doing, if you don't improve, you're going to lose customers. And I must tell you, those of you that are into content creating and internet stuff, now, in fact, every area of life, there is a new trend that is coming out. Artificial intelligence, AI, is everywhere. Artificial intelligence is taking over the world by storm. A lot of people are skeptical about artificial intelligence, but I must advise you what you know how to do. Start exploring it in the area of artificial intelligence because in the next few years, if you don't improve in this aspect, you're going to be left behind. I assure you, I can assure you, praise the Lord. There are certain things I'm doing in order to bring these um, messages to you on YouTube that I couldn't have done before now because they will be so tasking and time-consuming. It is still time-consuming, I must tell you. But there are certain things I do now that I couldn't have done without the help of artificial intelligence. Praise the Lord. I'm not a graphic designer, but you can watch this video at the beginning and the, you can say this is good. Praise the Lord. So um, knowledge is good. Um, of course, you know, there are two sides of everything. There is the good side and the bad side of everything. Artificial intelligence also have the bad sides. But when you go there, do what you have come to do. Do not explore areas that are unnecessary. It's like a double-edged sword. But it's beautiful. Praise the Lord. So submit yourself and learn. Improve. Update yourself and grow. Praise the Lord. Number five. Are you there? Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Number five, learn to serve. Learn to serve is somehow linked to the previous point, number four. Learn to serve. You can actually learn from someone without having that serving spirit, you know? So learn to serve. Humble yourself and learn how to serve. Serve. Our people used to say that only phase is a royaka. It is true. Prophets of old, some of them had their masters. Elijah, his son, his apprentice was Elisha. And Elisha inherited a double portion of the spirit of Elijah. Praise the Lord. And there used to be sons of the prophets then, you know. People taught people how to do things. Jacob served his father-in-law, Laban. You know, people served. Remember the story of es the story of Ruth and Naomi. You know, service. You learn how to serve. The apostle Paul had people under him. Some eventually left him, but he could say, "This is my son, and uh, I fathered him, my son in the Lord." Those are people who humble themselves and learn and served. When you are serving, have patience, endure. It's not going to be all bed of roses. Amen. It's not going to be all bed of roses. You will serve. You will be tested. You will be tested. Remember 
what Jesus said when the two sons of thunder came to him and uh, their mother brought them to him and he said, Master, promise that these my two children will take the position one at your right and one at your left in the kingdom. <laughs> Praise the Lord. That's an audacious and an, 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 an ambitious mother. Praise the Lord. And the, the Lord now, after speaking to them, brought, called some children close to him and said, if any of you want to be the greatest, they must become the servant of all. You know, speaking about the two sons of thunder, they must not lord it over others. That's the ambition. Then when they asked him, Lord, who is the greatest? That was when he told them, if you want to be the greatest, you must be the servant of all. So for you to be great, you must serve. You must be a servant before you will rise. Because when you rise tomorrow, you will have people who will serve you. People will come to serve you. So by serving, you receive impartation. You receive impartation. By serving, you rise. Tell me great people who do not have a master. Politicians, there must be somebody you will learn from. There must be businessmen, people who feel they can stand alone. Watch them. They don't actually progress. You must submit to someone to learn. You must serve. The person may be older than you. That's okay. That's just perfectly okay. That's just fine. The person may be older than you. You may look, you may not like the person, you may, you may not like the shape of the nose, you may not like his eyes, the person may not be handsome or beautiful. Yet, serve. Praise the Lord. Serve. Serve. Um, the word of God says in first Peter, in first Peter chapter 5, verse 6. First Peter chapter 5, verse 6. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Do you understand that verse? Humble yourself, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. So where is the hand of God? Where do you find the mighty hand of God to humble yourself under? It is not saying go to your church and you go to the pulpit and put your head under there. That's not what it means. You know, or go to your prayer altar and they hide yourself under the table. That's not the hand of God. So here is the hand of God. Where do you find the hand of God? It is not going to church. That's not what it means. Go to the church and the sits and they sit like the holiest. That's not humbling yourself under the mighty hand of God. The hand of God is the servant of God or the person whom God is using or the person whom God has blessed. Amen. That's the hand of God. When the power of God is upon someone, we say that the hand of God is on that person. And the right hand of God is power. So when talking about the ministers of God, prophets, Pastors, priests, this is the hand of God. Humble yourself under them. If you are not sure of what I'm telling you, read the verse in context. Read that passage in context. Um, read it um, the, from verse 1 of First Peter chapter 5. You see that it is admonishing you to humble yourself and serve. Serve your master. Praise the Lord. So that is the hand of God. Listen. The person may not necessarily be going to church. The person may not necessarily be a Christian. But there is something this person has that God has given him. Humble yourself. Praise the Lord. So that's what it means to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. That's number five. Learn by serving. Learn by serving. Praise the Lord. 
Number six. La so fedishan kaka felina. Zeva so zati kazuzuke felina ya. Umbra na sente ke feliaba. In the name of Jesus. Number six. Flee from premarital sex. Flee from premarital sex. It is a destiny destroyer and a destiny waster. Flee from premarital sex. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Flee. Wait. Have patience. Sex is not just a meeting of a man and a woman, a girl and a boy. It goes beyond that. It goes deeper than that. Sex is deep. It is a covenant. Premarital sex or extramarital sex has brought down many destinies. Many great men and women have fallen from the top to the bottom. Some have disappeared from the scene because of this sin of sexual immorality. Praise the Lord. So guide yourself jealously, especially if you are called into ministry. Hallelujah. Especially if the divine purpose in your life is a kingdom-related one. Maybe God has called you to be a minister of the gospel, to be a preacher, gospel artist, a worshiper, a singer, a prophet, a pastor, a priest. Flee from premarital sex. It has brought down great destiny. It has reduced great anointings to rubbles. Flee. Do not even dare. Do not go there. That one now no go area if you want to fulfill destiny in life. If not, you may be left with what is just a shadow of yourself. Praise the Lord. I'm not going to spend time on that. I'm not going to spend that on that on that, but it's so important. Flee from sexual immorality. Amen. Number seven, number seven, if you know God has called you to ministry of any kind, be it singing ministry, preaching, teaching, you must pray. Amen. Prayer must become part and parcel of your life. Prayer must become part and parcel of your life because the word of God says, my house shall be called a house of prayer. Amen. Jesus himself prayed. Jesus, the son of God, the son of the living God, he prayed. Why won't you pray? Amen. Pray. The reason you have to pray is, it's God that gave you that destiny. Amen. And you need him to fill it. He has the map. He got the map. He got the map of your life. You need to remain connected with him in order to read the map. Praise the Lord. His life is in you. He gave you life. And God has made every human person in such a way that there is a yearning in our hearts for God. There is a desire, a yearning, a thirst for the divine. For the divine. There is a space, an emptiness in our hearts that craves for fulfillment and satisfaction. Amen. St. Augustine will say that our souls, are, our hearts are restless until they find rest in you. Praise the Lord. So if you are called to minister in the sanctuary and you want to fulfill your destiny, Prayers must become part and parcel of you because there are aspects of you. There are dimensions in you. There are abilities and capabilities embedded in you that will not manifest you until you unlock them through the power 
of prayer and with the power of prayers. Prayer is like a, 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 a fractional distillation method. Amen. Or prayer is like a refinery where crude oil is refined into different products. As you're praying, 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 you are unlocking the gas, unlocking the petrol, unlocking the kerosene, unlocking the diesel, unlocking the uh, grease, so many other things. So you're praying, things are manifesting. You discover that now you are seeing visions. You discover that now you are singing better. You discover that as you keep praying, there is power in your voice that was not there before. You discover that people are actually listening to you more because you keep praying, you kept praying. Preacher, evangelist, pastor, gospel artist, worshiper, praise warrior. Listen, listen, listen to me. Stay with God in the place of prayer. Stay with God. Stay with the Lord. Pray. Let him announce you. Let him pour something on you. Let his signature come upon you. When that happens, you don't need nobody to, to, to promote you. God himself will tell people to promote you. You don't need to beg people. I see people who say, please repost. Please repost. Please do this. They sing in the studio. They put their phone number, their social media handles. Yet, nothing is happening. Praise the Lord. It is because you have not been fully made. When that grace comes upon you, when the anointing comes upon you, people will know you. Amen. So wait for God's time. Wait for God's time as you labor. That is even a topic of its own. Praise the Lord. I hope by the grace of God, one day we're going to um, speak to music ministers. It's been in my heart um, to speak to music ministers because music actually goes deeper than most singers know. Praise the Lord. Every destiny needs prayer for preservation and survival. So not just preachers and those who are called to preach the gospel as evangelists and prophets, but only them need to pray. Every destiny needs prayer. But the amount of prayer a politician needs to be a good politician is not the amount of prayer a pastor needs to survive. You understand that? The amount of prayer you need to survive as a prophet, as an evangelist, is not the, uh, the same amount of prayer that a fashion designer needs. Both needs prayer, but at different levels. Praise the Lord. That's number seven. So number eight. Number eight. So important. Improve yourself daily. Improve yourself daily. What does that mean? Add something to your bank of knowledge every day. Every day. Improve your skill. Add something. Remember our first point is, our number one is pinpoint that one thing you are very good at. Then, Number eight says, improve yourself daily. Make sure you learn something new every day. Make sure you learn something new, no matter how small. Learn something new every day. Learn something new. Add something to yourself every day. This is powerful. Praise the Lord. Add something new. Buy books. Read online. Use your Google, watch YouTube. These things have become close and handy. Amen. So do not spend all your data on Facebook. Amen. Watching videos, endless videos. Spend it on something that can benefit you. Praise the Lord. So improve yourself daily. 
add something daily. This is very powerful. And uh, this will keep you relevant. Praise the Lord. This will keep you relevant at all times. Number nine. We are still going. Amen. Number nine says, um, be patient and trust the process. Be patient and trust the process. Be patient and trust the process. No hurries. Do not hurry off to manifest. Praise the Lord. Be patient. Do not be, you know, when a hen starts laying her eggs, she has a target. She has a target. Some will decide to lay five eggs, some seven, some 11. Amen. When they get to that point, they want, they stop laying eggs and they sit on it. They sit on it. Many days ago, do they don't care? They sit on it. Oh, no, they are there. They don't stand up there. They don't go out unless they want to go and eat. When they are really hungry, they want to go and eat. Amen. They don't even stand up to go to the toilet anyhow. Praise the Lord. <laughs> and that is why when you see those hens, when they eventually leave their nest and they make their de deposit out there, it's always heavy. Amen. Look at that kind of discipline. Or oh, cooker. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Some people cannot even sit on a table for 30 minutes studying. 30 minutes, they, you cannot sit down and study. How are you going to survive? Go and learn from the hand. She's not going to the toilet now, now and then. Praise the Lord. Um, I, I met a young boy some weeks ago. And the, um, I was showing you how to do something on a particular device. I will show you what to do, and he will do it for three minutes. And he will say, I want to go and rest. I want to go and stretch. Three minutes, you want to go and stretch. Five minutes, you want to go and stretch. Praise the Lord. You need staying power. You need the staying power. You need to stay and learn. Amen. Whatever you're doing, you need to learn how to sit one place for one hour. Certain times you need to lock yourself up in a room for a whole day. Shut yourself out from the world. Concentrate. Delve deep into God. Delve deep into knowledge. Learn deep, deep. Discover knowledge. Forget your contemporaries. Forget those friends. Forget those people that are keeping you busy 24 hours on Facebook, on WhatsApp, doing nothing, chatting away your life. And you don't realize that time is going. Time waits for no one. Amen. Remember that song, um, that nursery rhyme. I don't know if, 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 if they still sing that nursery rhyme these days. He says, Tick says the clock, tick, tick. What you have to do, do it quick. Amen. Time waits for nobody. Shut yourself out. Shut the world out. Stay indoors. Be alone. Do not be afraid of staying alone. There are people who cannot stay alone. There are people who cannot stay quiet, who cannot be quiet for, for 10 minutes, 15 minutes. They must talk. There are persons who cannot stay in a quiet, quiet environment. They will run out. They will run out. They have to be chatting. They have to be talking. How are you going to survive? Too much talk. It's not good. Praise the Lord. Start disciplining yourself. You must discipline yourself. You know, one man of God said that that word, contemporary, is Temporal company. Temporal company. Contemporaries. Praise the Lord. Peer group. Peer, your peers. You came alone. 
the day your mama born you, none of them was there. Amen. When God created you and assigned you that great destiny, nobody was there. They were not there. That your friend, you cannot, you don't, you don't want to leave. You cannot spend 30 minutes without chatting. How are you doing? Where, where are you? What are you doing now? Okay. Okay, I will call you back. On the phone for five minutes, 10 minutes, 30 minutes, saying nothing. Just leave the phone and be looking at each other. And time is going. Praise the Lord. Keep those friends away. Sometimes you need to be alone and learn. If you are called into ministry, you know the calling of God is upon your life. Sometimes you have to leave the busy environment, go to deserts, go to a quiet place, go to the mountains and stay two days, three days, five days, fasting and praying. This is what you need to do. Jesus did that 40 days and 40 nights in the, in the, in the, in the wilderness. Praying and fasting. Amen. Jesus at times will leave his disciples and go to a lonely place and pray. He will wake up in the morning and, and leave the house, go to a quiet place and pray. You must learn how to separate yourself from people. Yes, praise the Lord. Remember, the top is a lonely place. The top, I can assure you, my dear friend, is a lonely place. The higher you go, the, lo the lonelier it becomes. If you are afraid of loneliness, you might not get to where you want to get. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want to ask you again to be patient and trust the process. Have patience. Do not hurry off. Do not hurry off because you have learned one or two or three skills. Wait. Empower yourself. Let God empower you in the name of Jesus. That's number nine. Um, can we have a quick recap of those points before we end this message? Number one is pinpoint that one thing you are very good at. Pinpoint that one thing. Find, that, find out that one thing you do very well. Number two, give yourself wholeheartedly and devotedly to that one thing. Give yourself totally to it. Put away distraction. Number three, deploy every resource available. Amen. Deploy everything available that can help you actualize your destiny. Number four, submit yourself and learn. Submit yourself to people who, have, who are already successful in that area and learn from them. You can even do that online. Follow such people on Facebook or WhatsApp. Watch their messages. Read their life. Study them and grow. Praise the Lord. Number five, learn to serve. If you want to be great, you must be a servant. Amen. One of the richest men in the world is the, today is Elon Musk. Amen. The owner of Amazon. Praise the Lord. I'm sure he's the owner of Amazon. Yeah, the COE. Most of them are serving you, but you don't know. They serve you, you pay them for the service. Microsoft. The Apple, you know, producing the iPhones that is making people go crazy. Praise the Lord. They are serving you and you're paying them for services. Those the deliveries, the, the Uber, um, all those things, boats, your, those drivers, they are serving you and you're paying them. The companies are serving you. you know? So it is by serving people that you grow. If you're too big to serve, then you are not ready to fulfill destiny. So learn to serve. Also, under that, I said to humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. The, man, the hand of God is upon people. So those people, you know that the hand of God is upon them. Humble yourself under them and serve and learn. Number six, flee from premarital sex. Flee from premarital sex. Number seven, if you know God has called you into ministry, kingdom project, you must pray. Prayer must become part and parcel of your life. That's number seven. Number eight, improve yourself daily. Improve yourself daily. Number nine, be patient and trust the process. 
Praise the Lord. Okay, let us cap it up with number 10. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. You must be somebody who knows how to sacrifice. When I say sacrifice, I'm not talking about the kind of sacrifice uh, uh, those guys that are doing Yahoo stuff do, you know. The sacrifice is sacrifice, you know. It's pulling something out of you, doing something that is uh, uh, something extraordinary in order to get what you want. They do it, it is their own understanding in their kingdom. They are caught. Those guys, they know how to, they understand sacrifice. The children of the devil, they understand sacrifice. Praise the Lord. But the children of light, the children of God, <laughs> if you tell them to do sacrifice, they will run. Praise the Lord. They don't, people don't want to inconvenience themselves. Sacrifice. Amen. Sacrifice. It's not just what, what you give. You can discomfort yourself. It's sacrifice. Amen. Praise the Lord. Leaving your house to go to a desert and spend days sleeping there, that's a sacrifice. That's a big sacrifice. You leave your house during holiday, you go to library and you're studying. That's sacrifice. You deny yourself sleep. Others are sleeping, you are awake, working, studying, improving yourself. That's sacrifice. This message you are listening to right now is being recorded around 3 a.m. in the morning. That's sacrifice. Praise the Lord. So to be productive, you must understand sacrifice. Listen, sacrifice is the language of spirits. Sacrifice is the language of spirits. Sacrifice is the language of spirits. Spirits do not, spirits do not and cannot but answer to sacrifices. Maybe that could be a topic for another day, but the few things I've already said about sacrifice, they can give you a good understanding of it. Learn how to sacrifice. Amen. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? If you are blessed, I want you to click, hit the like button. Hit the like button so that more people will see this message. Do not just watch and go. Amen. Share this message. Share this message. As you can see, it is still a new channel. Hit the subscribe button. Subscribe to our channel. Praise the Lord. And God will bless you. Also, hit the notification button so that anytime we upload, you will be notified. Praise the Lord. May the Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Ask the Lord to empower you to fulfill destiny. As for the grace, pray. Grace to fulfill destiny, O Lord, I pray. Father, empower your people, empower your son, empower your daughter. May your glory be upon them. Father, may they fulfill destiny in the name of Jesus. See you again next time. May God bless you and keep you. Amen. Bye.